Welcome back to the Interplanar Fighting Championships where D&D monsters battle for bragging rights. A new tournament full of CR2 monsters is about to start. And if you want to fill out a bracket, here's the official IFC scoring system. If you guess a round one matchup correctly, you get one point. If you guess a round two matchup correctly, you get two points. If you guess a semifinal bout correctly, you get four points. And if you guess the championship match correctly, you get eight points. Also, I made a Discord. Link is in my bio. And that is it. Our CR2 tournament is starting with a doozy. We got the Berserker versus the CR1 champion Spectre. Who's gonna win? There's only one way to find out. We gotta roll. The Berserker is gonna go first. The Berserker has a feature called Reckless. At the start of its turn, the Berserker can gain advantage on all melee weapon attacks during that turn, but attack rolls against it have advantage until the start of its next turn. So, the Berserker going Reckless is gonna do a great axe attack with advantage. <laughs> 12 plus 5 is a 17, a 17 hits. 1d12 plus 3 slashing damage. 15 points of slashing damage, but the Spectre is resistant to slashing damage from non-magical attacks, so that 15 points of slashing damage is only going to be 7 points of damage to the Spectre. It is now the Spectre's turn. Going to use their life drain attack. Because the Berserker went reckless, the Spectre has advantage on this attack. A nat 1, but a 12 plus 4 is going to hit the Berserker. 3d6 necrotic damage. 12 points of necrotic damage. The Berserker needs to make a DC 10 constitution saving throw or its hit point max is reduced by amount equal to the damage taken. 13 plus 3 is going to save. It is now back to the Berserker's turn. The Berserker is going to make another reckless great axe attack. An 8 plus 5 is a 13. A 13 hits. 4 plus 3 is 7 slashing damage. Halved to 3. Now the Spectre's turn. Another life drain attack at advantage. A 19 plus 4 is going to hit. 9 points of necrotic damage. Another constitution saving throw from the Berserker. Another 13 plus 3 is going to save, and it is now back to the Berserker's turn. Reckless Great Axe attack. An 18 plus 5 is going to hit. 9 plus 3 is 12, halved to 6. Oh man, and the Spectre is slowly getting beaten down here. It is now the Spectre's turn. A life drain attack at advantage. Ooh. <laughs> That's not looking good for the Spectre. A 3 plus 4 is going to miss the Berserker's turn. Another Reckless Great Axe attack. An 18 plus 5 hits. 7 plus 3 is 10. Have to 5 points of damage. The Spectre is hanging on by a thread. It is now the Spectre's turn. They need something huge. Life Drain at advantage. There we go. Okay. Okay. There's a chance here. A nat 20. This is 6d6 necrotic damage. Oh my god. That's a big roll. That's a big roll. Okay. Math time. That is 26 points of damage to the Berserker. That is big. DC 10 constitution saving throw for the Berserker. A nat 20. It is now the Berserker's turn. Reckless. Great axe attack. For the Spectre to have a chance, the higher of the two dice needs to be a 7 or under. For a second there, I thought, I thought it happened, but an 8 plus 5 is a 13. A 13 beats the AC of the Spectre, and minimum damage defeats the Spectre. A valiant fight from our CR1 champion, and the Berserker is moving on to the next round. The IFC brought in a kiddie pool for this next round one matchup. Hunter Shark versus Centaur. Who's gonna win? There's only one way to find out. We gotta roll. The Centaur is up first. It's gonna use their charge feature. If the centaur moves at least 30 feet straight toward a target, then hits it with a pike attack on the same turn, the target takes an extra 3d6 piercing damage. Oh no, centaur! A 3 plus 6 is going to miss. But the centaur does have a multi-attack, one with its pike and one with its hooves. An 11 plus 6 is going to hit 2d6 plus 4 bludgeoning damage. 
Bad roll there. Seven points of bludgeoning damage. Now the hunter shark's turn. Gonna make a bite attack. An eight plus six is gonna hit. 2d8 plus four piercing damage. Nine plus four is 13 points of piercing damage. The centaur's turn again. First off, pike attack. A seven plus six hits. Hooves attack. A six plus six is also gonna hit. A total of 1d10 plus 2d6 plus eight points of damage. Ooh, that's a good roll. 19 plus eight, 27 points of damage. Wow, what a hit from the centaur. It is now the hunter shark's turn. The hunter shark has a feature called blood frenzy. The shark has advantage on melee attacks against any creature that doesn't have all of its hit points. So the hunter shark is gonna do a bite attack at advantage. A 16 plus six is going to hit. Same roll. 13 points of piercing damage. The centaur has a good chance to finish it right here. So, so, so. If the centaur hits with both attacks, minimum damage will take out the hunter shark. Pike attack. A natural 20. Okay, a natural 20. The hunter shark needs the hooves to miss. A fiber lure and the hunter shark stands a chance. Seven on the dice, plus six, a 13 hits, and with minimum damage, the centaur takes out the hunter shark. The centaur is moving on to the next round. Moving along in round one of our CR2 tournament, we got the Allosaurus versus the Darkling Elder. Who's gonna win? There's only one way to find out. We gotta roll. The Allosaurus is gonna go first. Gonna use their pounce ability. If the Allosaurus moves at least 30 feet straight toward a creature and then hits it with a claw attack, that target it must succeed on DC 13 strength saving throw or be knocked prone. A four plus six, a 10 does not hit for the dino, which brings us to the Darkling Elder. The Darkling Elder is gonna cast darkness on their scimitar. Magical darkness spreads from a point you choose, a 15 foot radius sphere. This spell lasts 10 minutes and is concentration. So the Allosaurus is blinded and cannot see. The Allosaurus's turn. The Allosaurus now in complete darkness going to run away from the darkling elder the darkling elder then gets an attack of opportunity with blind sight is unaffected by the darkness spell and because the allosaurus is blinded the darkling elder is going to have advantage on this attack of opportunity so a scimitar attack plus five to hit with advantage a 16 plus five is gonna hit the Allosaurus. 1d6 plus three slashing plus 2d6 necrotic. 14 points of damage. So with 60 feet of movement, the Allosaurus gets 30 feet away from the Darkling Elder, turns around and is going to attempt to make another pounce attack, this time with disadvantage because they're running back into the darkness. Oh no, a natural one. The Darkling Elders turn two scimitar attacks, both at advantage because the Allosaurus is blinded. A 16 plus five hits and a 12 plus five hits. A total of 2d6 plus six slashing plus 46 necrotic. All right, math time. We're gonna do a math break. 19 plus six is 25 points of damage. Ooh, this is not looking good for the Allosaurus at all. And it is now their turn. Ay, 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 what do they do? Do they try to leave again? The Allosaurus at this point is gonna just have to hope for some good rolls. Going to try to make a bite attack with disadvantage. All right, an 11 plus six, that hits. 2d10 plus four piercing damage. 13 points of piercing damage. The Darkling Elder needs to beat a DC 10 concentration check or they lose concentration on their darkness. A 15 plus one succeeds. And it is now the Darkling Elder's turn. They're gonna make two scimitar attacks, both at advantage. If both of the scimitar attacks hit, minimum damage will take out the Allosaurus. Two 13s, attack number one hits. Both dice need to be seven or lower for this attack to miss. Let's see. 
that's two nat 20s. Oh my god. Doesn't even matter. The Darkling Elder defeats the Allosaurus. We're getting magic now. This is fun. The Darkling Elder is moving on to the next round. Our next round one matchup in our CR2 tournament is the Giant Tick versus the Rug of Smothering. Who's gonna win? There's only one way to find out. We gotta roll. The Giant Tick is gonna be up first. Gonna use their Proboscis melee weapon attack plus five to hit. An 18 plus 5 is certainly going to hit. 2d6 plus 3 piercing damage. 8 points of damage. And the tick attaches to the target. It is now the Rug of Smothering's turn. Going to use their Smother attack. A 10 plus 5 is going to hit. And so, with a hit, the creature is grappled. Until this grapple ends, the target is restrained, blinded, and at risk of suffocating. In addition, at the start of each of the target's turns, the target takes 2d6 plus 3 bludgeoning damage. And so, the giant tick is now grappled, restrained, and blinded. And it is now the giant tick's turn. At the start of their turn, is going to take 2d6 plus 3 bludgeoning damage. 13 points of bludgeoning damage. The giant tick has a blood drain action. The tick deals 2d6 plus 3 necrotic damage to one creature it is physically attached to. But if the creature is a construct or an undead, they cannot use this action. And unfortunately for the giant tick, the rug of smothering is a construct. So the giant tick cannot use their blood drain action. The giant tick is going to detach itself and make a proboscis attack at disadvantage. A 4 plus 5 is going to miss. It is now the Rug of Smothering's turn. The Rug of Smothering is already smothering the Giant Tick, so they are not going to do anything on the turn, and is back to the Giant Tick's turn, who takes 2d6 plus 3 bludgeoning damage. 9 points of bludgeoning damage. The Giant Tick is going to try the same thing, a proboscis attack at disadvantage. Two eights and 8 plus 5 does hit. 10 plus 3 is 13 points of piercing damage. All right, this is interesting. Although, hold up, hold up. The Rug of Smothering has a feature called damage transfer. While it is grappling a creature, the rug takes only half the damage dealt to it, and the creature grappled by the rug takes the other half. So, the Rug of Smothering takes 6 points of piercing damage, and the Giant Tick also takes 6 points of piercing damage. It is now the Rug of Smothering turn they're going to stay where they're at and continue to smother and is back to the giant tick the giant tick is going to take 2d6 plus 3 bludgeoning damage nine points of bludgeoning damage the giant tick is getting beat up and they understand now they are going to have to break this grapple to survive so the giant tick is going to use athletics dc 13 a 19 on the dice. The giant tick escapes the grapple and is no longer grappled, restrained, blinded. The rug of smothering's turn. Going to have to try to smother the giant tick one more time. A 17 plus 5 hits. The rug of smothering is now smothering the giant tick. Top of the giant tick's turn. Going to take 2d6 plus 3 bludgeoning damage. Baby, 14 points of bludgeoning damage. The giant tick has to try to escape this grapple. And if they don't escape this grapple, they will fully be smothered. This is a very important roll. A 10 or higher and the giant tick escapes this grapple. Okay, a 13 plus 3. The giant tick escapes the grapple. It is back to the rug of smothering. They're going to try to smother one more time. On a hit, they're going to win. Nine or better on this dice. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. A natural one. The giant tick is now up with one HP. The giant tick is going to do a proboscis attack at advantage. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let's see. A 16 plus five is going to hit. 10 points of piercing damage. Rug a smothering now. Again, another smother attack. On a hit, they win. They need a nine or better on this dice. Oh. And 18. And with that, the rug of smothering defeats the giant tick. That was an incredible matchup. So crazy. The rug of smothering is moving on to the next round. Continuing with our CR2 tournament, our next round one matchup is the Emerald Dragon Wormling versus the Gelatinous Cube. Who's going to win? There's only one way to find out. We got to roll. The Gelatinous Cube is going to be up first. They're going to use their engulf feature. It can enter a larger, smaller creature space. The creature must make a DC 12 
dexterity saving throw. Emerald Dragon Wormling, they add a plus three to this. A nine plus three is a 12. Exactly what they needed to save. And it is now the Emerald Dragon Wormling's turn. It's going to use their disorienting breath. Exhales a wave of psychic dissonance in a 15 foot cone. Each creature in that area must make a DC 12 intelligence saving throw. Unfortunately for the gelatinous cube, they have a minus five to intelligence. <laughs> A 19 minus 5 is a 14, and a 14 saves. Oh my goodness. On a successful save, the creature takes 5d6 psychic damage halved. That is going to be, math, 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 16 points of psychic damage halved to 8 points of damage. It is now the gelatinous cube's turn. Going to try their engulf action. The Emerald Dragon Wormling, another DC 12 dexterity saving throw. A seven plus three is a 10. That does not succeed. On a failed save, the creature takes 3d6 acid damage and is engulfed. 10 points of acid damage, the engulf creature can't breathe, is restrained, and takes 66 acid damage at the start of each of the cube's turn. Emerald Dragon Wormling's turn. First off, to see if their disorienting breath recharges. Recharges on a 5 or 6. 3 does not recharge it. So, an engulf creature can try to escape by taking an action to make a DC 12 strength check. That is what the Emerald Dragon Wormling is going to try to do. 10 or better, and the Emerald Dragon Wormling can escape. A nine plus two is a 11, and the Emerald Dragon Wormling is still engulfed. The gelatinous cubes turn. On the top of their turn, an engulfed creature takes 66 acid damage. Okay, okay, make sure I math it right. 20 points of acid damage. Oh my gosh, that is bad, bad, bad. The Emerald Dragon Wormling's turn. They need to get out of this. First, let's see if they get their disorienting breath. They do not get their disorienting breath. Plus two to this, DC 12 strength check. An eight plus two, the Emerald Dragon Wormling is still engulfed. The top of the gelatinous cube's turn, 66 acid damage. The Emerald Dragon Wormling needs a crazy bad roll. A crazy bad roll, there's no chance, right? There's no chance. All right, yeah, I told you, there's no chance of that. And with that, the Emerald Dragon Wormling goes down. The Gelatinous Cube is victorious. The Gelatinous Cube is moving on to the next round. Our next round one matchup of our CR2 tournament pits the Red Guard Drake versus the Lantern Archon. Who's gonna win? There's only one way to find out. We gotta roll. The Lantern Archon is gonna be first, and they're gonna do two Radiant Strike attacks. <laughs> A 16 plus 5 hits and a 12 plus 5 hits. 2d6 plus 6 radiant damage. 12 points of radiant damage. The red guard drake's turn. At the start of their turn, they need to make a wisdom saving throw from the Lantern Archon's Aura of Menace. Each creature starting its turn within 20 feet of the Archon must make a DC 11 wisdom saving throw. A 14 plus zero is going to succeed. On a successful save, the creature is immune to all Archon's Aura of Menace for 24 hours. If they would have failed, they would have been frightened until the start of its next turn. The Red Guard Drake has a multi-attack, makes one bite attack and one tail attack. Let's start with the bite attack. A 10 plus five hits their tail attack. An eight plus five also hits. 1d8 plus three piercing damage plus 1d6 plus three bludgeoning damage. 14 points of total damage. But, 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 the Lantern Archon is resistant to piercing and bludgeoning damage from non-magical attacks. So that 14 points of damage is only going to deal seven points of damage to the Lantern Archon. It is now the Lantern Archon's turn. Two more Radiant Strike attacks. Two nines. A nine plus five is a 14. Two hits. That is six plus six. 12 points of damage. It is now the red guard drake's turn. Gonna do another multi attack. First up, the bite attack. A nine plus five hits. Now their tail attack. A 10 plus five hits. Seven plus six, 13 points of damage, halved six points of damage. It is getting close, folks. We are getting down to it. The Lantern Archon's turn. Two more Radiant Strike attacks. A four plus five misses, but a 10 plus five does hit. 
eight points of radiant damage. The red guard Drake's turn, another multi-attack. First up is going to be the bite. A 13 plus five hits. Tail attack. A natural 20. This is big. Here we go. 1d8 plus 2d6 plus 6 damage. 18 or more total damage. We'll take out the Lantern Archon because of the resistance. A 12 on these three dice. We'll do it and the Red Guard Drake will be victorious. That is not a 12. That is a total of 16 points of damage. Halved to 8. This is a big turn for the Lantern Archon. They're gonna cast their once a day spell, Aid. Each target's hit point maximum and current hit points increases by 5 for the duration. So we're back to the Red Guard Drake. Going to do another multi attack. First up is the Bite. Okay, a 2 plus 5 is going to miss. Next up is the Tail Attack. A 9 plus 5 is going to hit 1d6 plus 3 bludgeoning damage. 6, have to 3, the Lantern Archon's turn. They're going to make two more Radiant Strike attacks. Ooh, a 4 on the dice misses, but a 16 plus 5 hits. Only 4 points of Radiant damage. That is tough, that is tough. And it's now the Red Guard Drake's turn. Multi-attack, first up bite. A 9 plus 5 is going to hit. Their tail attack. On a hit, minimum damage will take down the Lantern Archon. An 8 or better, and the Red Guard Drake is victorious. And that is a natural 20. And with that, the Red Guard Drake takes down the Lantern Archon. And the Red Guard Drake is moving on to the next round. Our second to last round one matchup of our CR2 tournament finds the Duragar Mindmaster up against the White Dragon Wormling. Who's going to win? There's only one way to find out. We got to roll. The White Dragon Wormling is going to go first. Going to use their Cold Breath. A blast of hail and a 15-foot cone. Each creature must make a DC 12 Constitution saving throw. An 8 plus 2 does not succeed. 5d8 cold damage. Ooh, not a good roll. Not a good roll at all. 16 points of cold damage. Now the Durgar Mind Master's turn. First, going to use their bonus action, Reduce. For one minute, the Durgar magically decreases size, reduces its weapon damage to 1, disadvantage on strength saving throws, but also gets a plus 5 bonus to its AC. And for their action, they are going to go invisible until it attacks or forces a creature to make a saving throw or its concentration is broken and it's back to the white dragon wormling first see if they get their cold breath back recharges on a five or six does not recharge their cold breath going to try to bite at disadvantage an eight plus four does not hit the Durgar Mind Master's turn. They have a multi-attack, two Mind Poison Dagger attacks. First Mind Poison Dagger attack is going to be at advantage. A 16 plus five is going to hit another Mind Poison Dagger attack straight up. Oh my gosh, one hit and one crit. The White Dragon Wormling takes two points of piercing damage. On top of that, 9d6 psychic damage. The first hit will be eight points of psychic damage. And now on their crit, a good roll here could take them out. This is gonna be really close. 21 points of psychic damage. My, oh my, the white dragon wormlings turn. Let's see if they get their cold breath back. My dice don't want dragons to get their breath weapon back, and I don't know why. The white dragon wormling is going to make a bite attack on the Durgar Mindmaster. Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, what the? Relax, dude. Relax. You're just making videos for the internet. Just relax. Okay. Critical hit. That's a critical hit. 2d10 plus 2 piercing damage plus 2d4 cold damage. A total of 21 and the Durgar Mind Master is down. Let's see. Let's do this together. That's a 10. This is a 6. 16. I'm sorry that my D4s suck. You gotta read them from the bottom because they're weird. So just do it with me. That's a 3. So we're up to 19. And guess what this is? Let's read it together. 
that is a two. A total of 21 plus two. And with that, the white dragon wormling does 23 points of damage. And with one hit point left, the white dragon wormling defeats the Durgar mind master with one hit point left. Let's go! The White Dragon Wormling is moving on to the next round. Our final round one matchup in our CR2 tournament pits the Hadozi Explorer versus the Spine Devil. Who's gonna win? There's only one way to find out. We gotta roll. The Hadozi Explorer is gonna go first. They're gonna pull out their musket and do a ranged weapon attack. A six plus five and 11 misses. Now to the Spine Devil. Is also gonna keep their distance and they're gonna do two tail spine attacks. That's not good. That's not good at all for the devil. Five plus four, that misses, and a natural one, which means the Hadozi Explorer is gonna have advantage on their next attack. Back to the Hadozi Explorer. With advantage, is gonna use their musket. Okay, a 16 plus five, that hits the Spine Devil. 2d12 plus three piercing damage. 13 points of piercing damage, but the Spine Devil is resistant to piercing damage from non-magical attacks, so that 13 points of piercing damage is only gonna be six points of damage to the Spine Devil. We're back to the Spine Devil, who's gonna make another two Tail Spine attacks. Nine plus four, a 13 misses, but a 12 plus four is a 16, and that does hit. 1d4 plus two piercing plus 1d6 fire damage seven points of damage and is back to the Hadozi Explorer's turn. Another musket attack. A 15 plus five is certainly going to hit. 14 plus three is 17. 17 halved is eight. Eight points of damage to the spined devil. This musket is bad. Spine devil's turn again. Two more tail spine attacks. Ooh, okay. Both of those are going to hit. Okay, 16 points of damage. That was a good turn. They're gonna need a few more of those. And it is now the Hadozi Explorer's turn. Another musket attack. Okay, that is a miss. A seven plus five is only a 12. And it is now back to the Spine Devil. Another two tail spine attacks. Okay, look at that. Two more hits for the Spine Devil. The comeback is on. Okay, okay, let's see. 16 points of damage and we got a game. This is a big round for the Hadozi Explorer. One more try, a musket attack. Okay, a 16 plus five, that does hit. The Spine Devil, resistant to this piercing damage. The Hadozi Explorer will need a total of 13 on these two dice. And the Hadozi Explorer will defeat the Spine Devil. That is a bad roll. A four plus two plus three is only nine points of piercing damage halved to four. And the spine devil is still up with a chance. This is huge. Two more tail spine attacks plus four to hit. Okay, a four plus four misses, but a 13 plus four hits. A total of eight on these two dice will do it for the spine devil. Oh. My gosh, that is a five. And look at this, that is a three. Five points of fire plus five points of piercing is 10 points of damage. And with that, the Spine Devil completes the comeback and defeats the Hadozi Explorer. I didn't think the Spine Devil had a chance after those first few rounds. The Spine Devil is moving on to the next round. Our first round two matchup of our CR2 tournament pits the Berserker versus the Centaur. Who's gonna win? There's only one way to find out we gotta roll. The Berserker is gonna go first. They're gonna use a feature called Reckless. At the start of its turn, the Berserker can gain advantage on all melee weapon attacks during that turn, but attack rolls against it have advantage until the start of its next turn. It's gonna make a Reckless Great Axe attack. Right off the bat, a natural 20. What a swing. 2d12 plus three slashing damage. And that's a good roll. 21 points of damage in round one. What a start. It is now the centaur's turn. Gonna use their multi-attack, one pike attack and one hooves attack with advantage because of the reckless. First up, the pike. And that's another nat 20 and their hooves attack. Oh. 
That's a lot worse. A five plus six misses, 2d10 plus four piercing damage. 17 points of piercing damage. Back to the Berserker's turn. Another Reckless Great Axe attack. An 18 plus 5 is going to hit. 1d12 plus 3 slashing damage. 6 points of slashing damage. Back to the Centaur. A Pike and Hooves attack, both with advantage. 9 plus 6, a 15 is going to hit with her Pike. Hooves attack. A 10 plus 6 is also going to hit. 1d10 plus 4 piercing, plus 2d6 plus 4 bludgeoning. Pretty good rolls. 25 points of damage. Wow, oh wow. That is a good round for the centaur. We are now back to the berserker. Another reckless great axe attack. And that is a natural 20. This could do it. A 15 on these two dice means the Berserker wins and puts down the Centaur. See if they can do it. <laughs> Why does this always happen? A 12 plus 3 is 15 plus 3 is 18. Exactly what the Berserker needed to take down the Centaur. Oh my goodness. I saw that 3 first and I was like, no way. The Berserker is moving on to the next round. Our next round 2 bout in our CR2 tournament pits the Darkling Elder versus the Rug of Smothering. Who's going to win? There's only one way to find out. We got to roll. The Darkling Elder is going to go first. Seeing that the Rug of Smothering Smothering does not have eyes is not going to cast darkness and instead is just going to go in for two scimitar attacks. A 15 plus 5 is a 20. An 11 plus 5 is a 16. Both of those hit. 2d6 plus 6 slashing damage plus 4d6 necrotic damage. Okay, math time. 26 points of total damage. An incredible start for the Darkling Elder and is now the Rug of Smothering's turn. The Rug of Smothering does one thing and that is smother. That's what they're gonna do. They're gonna use their smother attack. Ooh, not good. A five plus five, 10 misses the Darkling Elder. Back to the Darkling Elder's turn. Two more scimitar attacks. A 2 plus 5 misses, but a 16 plus 5 hits. This might be over very quickly for the rug. The only way that the rug of smothering can stay up is if I roll three ones. Any other number than a 1 means the rug of smothering is down. Let's see. Those aren't ones. I'm not a mathematician, but those aren't ones. Which means the Darkling Elder takes down the Rug of Smothering. The Darkling Elder is moving on to the semifinals. Continuing round two of our CR2 tournament, we have the Gelatinous Cube versus the Red Guard Drake. Who's gonna win? There's only one way to find out. We gotta roll. The Gelatinous Cube is going to be up first. Gonna use their engulf action. The cube moves up to its speed. While doing so, it can enter a larger, smaller creature space. The creature must make a DC 12 dexterity. Dexterity saving throw. A six plus zero fails. The creature takes 3d6 acid damage and is engulfed. Eight points of acid damage. The engulfed creature can't breathe, is restrained, and takes 66 acid damage at the start of each of the cube's turns. It is now the Red Guard Drake's turn. The Red Guard Drake is not going to try to escape. They are just going to do a multi attack, one bite attack and one tail attack. Both of these are going to be at disadvantage. A 15 plus 5 is going to hit, and their tail attack. A 16 plus 5 is going to hit. A total of 1d8 plus 1d6 plus 6. 13 points of damage. But it's now the Gelatinous Cube's turn. The Red Guard Drake is going to take 66 acid damage. Let's roll. All right, time to math. 22 points of damage. The Gelatinous Cube, my god. Gosh! And it is now the Red Guard Drake's turn. Realizes they need to get out. DC 12 strength check. 18 plus 3 means the Red Guard Drake escapes the Gelatinous Cube. Back to the Gelatinous Cube. Try to engulf the Red Guard Drake. DC 12 dexterity saving throw. A 17 plus 0 succeeds, meaning they are not engulfed. Now the Red Guard Drake's turn. One bite attack and one tail attack. First up, the bite. A 5 plus 5 hits. A 9 plus 5 hits. Ooh, a bad roll. 11 points of damage and is now back to the gelatinous cube. Engulf the red guard drake one more time. DC 12 dexterity saving throw. An 8 plus 0 does not succeed. The red guard drake is engulfed one more time and takes 3d6 acid damage. 
12 points of acid damage. Red guard Drake's turn now. They have to try to break out of this. DC 12 strength check. Okay, a 12 plus 3 means the Red Guard Drake gets out back to the gelatinous cube. Another engulf. DC 12 dexterity saving throw. Oh no. Natural 1. 3d6 acid damage. 10 on these dice. And they are down. That's only six points of acid damage. They gotta do it. They gotta try to get out of this one more time. DC 12 strength check. 16 plus 3 succeeds, but it is now the gelatinous cube's turn. Another engulf attack. DC 12 deck save. Okay, a 19 succeeds for the red guard drake. They are now up. One bite and one tail attack. First up the bite. A 4 plus 5 hits. A tail. An 11 plus 5 hits. There we go. 12 plus 6 is 18 points of damage. You know what we're doing. DC 12 deck save. No, a six. The red guard drake is engulfed. 3d6 acid damage. The only way the red guard drake stays up is if I roll all ones. That's not all ones. The gelatinous cube takes down the red guard drake. The red guard drake put up a valiant effort, but the gelatinous cube was too much. The gelatinous cube is moving on to the semifinals. Our final round two matchup of our CR2 tournament pits the white dragon wormling versus the spine devil. Who's gonna win? There's only one way to find out. We gotta roll. The white dragon wormling is gonna go first. Gonna start off with their cold breath. An icy blast of hail in a 15 foot cone, a DC 12 constitution saving throw 15 plus 1 is going to succeed 5d8 cold damage halved math time 27 points of cold damage halved to 13 and also the spine devil is resistant to cold damage only takes six points of cold damage it is now the spined devil's turn going to make two tail spine attacks an 18 and a 19, both of the tail spines hit. 2d4 plus 2 piercing damage plus 2d6 fire damage. Okay. 16 points of damage. That is a big hit from the spine devil. We are now back up to the white dragon wormling. First, see if they get their cold breath back. A 5 or a 6 on this dice. They do not get their cold breath back. So they are going to go in for bite attack. 5 plus 4 is going to miss. Back to the Spine Devil's turn. The Spine Devil is going to use a feature called Flyby. The Devil does not provoke an opportunity attack when it flies out of an enemy's reach and does two more Tail Spine attacks. A 9 plus 4 is going to miss, but the 17 plus 4 is going to hit. 1d4 plus 2 piercing damage plus 1d6 fire damage. 5 points of piercing damage plus 3 points of fire damage is a total of 8 points of damage back to the white dragon wormling. Let's see if they get their cold breath back. There we go. The first time in IFC history, a dragon gets their breath weapon back. Just give me a round of applause, please. Don't do that. You're probably in a public space. People are going to think you're weird. Okay, they're going to elect to use their cold breath. This is another DC 12 constitution saving throw. And that is a nat 20. Okay, okay, here we go. 22 points of cold damage. Have to 11 because they save. Have to 5 because they're resistant to cold damage. Another huge roll for the Spine Devil. The Spine Devil is now going to be up. Going to make two more Tail Spine attacks. Okay, a 15 plus 4 is going to hit. But a natural 1 gives a White Dragon Wormling advantage on their next attack roll. A total of 6 on these two dice. And the Spine Devil defeats the White Dragon Wormling. That's a 5 on the fire damage. And of course, we just got to show it. That is a 1 on the piercing damage. Is a total of 8 points of damage. And with that, the White Dragon Wormling is down. What a run by the Spine Devil. I did not see this coming. The Spine Devil is moving on to the semifinals. We are on to the semifinals in our CR2 tournament. Berserker versus Darkling Elder. Who's going to win? There's only one way to find out. We got to roll. The Darkling Elder will be up first. Going to catch. 
cast darkness on their scimitar, creates a 15 foot radius sphere of magical darkness. The Darkling Elder is concentrating and is completely shrouded in darkness. It is now to the Berserker's turn, going to rush into the darkness and use their reckless feature. At the start of its turn, the Berserker can gain advantage on all melee weapon attack rolls during that turn, but attack rolls against it have advantage until the start of its next turn. With reckless, they get advantage, but because of the darkness, they get disadvantage. So a flat great axe attack. A four plus five is not going to hit. Next up is going to be the Darkling Elder. In the darkness, the Berserker is blinded as well as they attacked recklessly. So going to have advantage on their scimitar attacks, which they make two of. A natural 20. 17 plus 5. One hit and one critical hit. The critical hit first. 2d6 plus 3 slashing damage plus 4d6 necrotic damage. Math time, here we go. 27 points of damage on the critical hit. Now, for their normal hit, 12 plus 3 is 15. Dang, 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 that is huge. Back to the Berserker. Another reckless great axe attack in the darkness means this is a straight d20 roll. A 19 plus 5 hits. 1d12 plus 3 slashing damage. 12 points of slashing damage. And with that damage, the Darkling Elder needs to make a concentration check. A DC 10 constitution saving throw. A 17 on the dice. The Darkling Elder is still concentrating on darkness. And it is now the Darkling Elder's turn. Going to have advantage on these attacks against the Berserker. A 12 plus 5 is going to hit. A 19 plus 5 is also going to hit. 2d6 plus 6 slashing damage plus 4d6 necrotic damage. A 19 on these 66s. And the Darkling Elder is going to defeat the Berserker. This might not be it. Okay, math time. Oh my gosh. That is 18 on the dice plus 6, 24 points of damage. And the Berserker is still up with one hit point. And it is now their turn. They are still in darkness. So a reckless great axe attack. 1d20. A crit would be incredible, but a hit gives them a chance. Let's see. A seven plus five is going to miss. Oh no, for the Berserker and is back to the Darkling Elder. Two scimitar attacks, both at advantage. They just need one hit. One hit, they're moving on to the championship. And that's it, folks. That's a 17 on the dice. And the Darkling Elder defeats the Berserker. Gosh darn it, these Darklings. The Darkling Elder is moving on to the championships. Our second semifinal bout of our CR2 tournament pits the Gelatinous Cube versus the Spine Devil. Who's gonna win? There's only one way to find out. We gotta roll. The Spine Devil will be up first. Going to do two Tailspine attacks. Plus four to hit. Okay, Spine Devil. One hit and one crit. 3d4 plus 4 piercing damage plus 3d6 fire damage. Okay, okay, okay. Let's do the math. 23 points of damage. That's a good start for the Spine Devil. It is now the Gelatinous Cube's turn. Going to try to engulf the Spine Devil. The cube moves up to its speed. It can enter large or smaller creature spaces. Whenever the cube enters a creature's space, the creature must make a DC 12 dexterity saving throw. 18 plus 2 passes. The Spine Devil does not get engulfed by the Gelatinous Cube and it is now their turn. It's gonna use their feature Flyby. The Devil does not provoke an opportunity attack when it flies out of an enemy's reach. So, two more Tail Spine attacks. Okay, even the 3 plus 4 is a 7. That hits. 2d4 plus 4 piercing damage plus 2d6 fire damage. 14 points of damage. The Spine Devil is hacking away. Back to the Gelatinous Cube. Going to try to engulf the Spine Devil. DC 12 dexterity saving throw for the Spine Devil. 5 plus 2 is a 7. That does not save for the Spine Devil. 3d6 acid damage. 8 points of acid damage. And the Spine Devil is engulfed. Can't breathe is restrained. And it is now the Spine Devil's turn. The Spine Devil is going to try to escape the Gelatinous Cube. DC 12 strength check. A 16 plus 0 succeeds, which means Spine Devil gets out of the Gelatinous Cube. And the Gelatinous Cube is going to try to engulf the Spine Devil one more time. DC 12 deck saving throw. A 7 plus 2 is a 9. That fails, and the Spine Devil is engulfed. Is it going to take 3d6 acid damage? 
eight more points of acid damage. Uh-oh. And it is now the Spine Devil's turn. They're gonna try to escape the gelatinous cube. DC 12 strength check. A nine. The Spine Devil cannot get out of the gelatinous cube. And with that, an engulfed creature takes 66 acid damage at the start of each of the cube's turns. With six hit points, minimum damage from the gelatinous cube takes out the Spine Devil. The gelatinous cube defeats the Spine Devil. That was a tough matchup, but the Spine Devil was doing good for so long. This gelatinous cube is tough, y'all. The gelatinous cube is moving on to the championship. The moment we've all been waiting for, the championships of the CR2 tournament. Darkling Elder versus the Gelatinous Cube. Who's gonna win? There's only one way to find out. We gotta roll. The Darkling Elder is gonna go first. Opts to not cast darkness and instead does their multi-attack. Two scimitar attacks. <laughs> An 11 and 19 on the dice both hit. 2d6 plus 6 slashing damage plus 4d6 necrotic. <laughs> Math time, let's do it. 31 points of damage. That is a good first round for the Darkling Elder. Now to the Gelatinous Cube. If you've been here, you know. I'm going to try to engulf the Darkling Elder. The cube moves up to its speed. It can enter larger, smaller creature spaces. Whenever the cube enters a creature space, the creature must make a DC 12 dexterity saving throw. 12 on the dice, plus 3 is a 15, a 15 saves. The Darkling Elder is not engulfed by the Gelatinous Cube, and it is now the Darkling Elder's turn. Two scimitar attacks. A 4 plus 5 hits, and a 14 plus 5 hits. Ooh, okay, not as good, but let's do the math. 24 points of damage. Another big crack at the Gelatinous Cube. It is now back to the Gelatinous Cube. They're gonna try to engulf the Darkling Elder once more. DC 12 Dexterity Saving Throw. A 14 plus 3 is a 17. A 17 saves. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Darkling Elder is now up. Two more scimitar attacks. 12 and 16 on the dice. Both of those are going to hit. All right, let's see. 2d6 plus 6 slashing plus 4d6 necrotic. A total of 23 on 66s. The gelatinous cube goes down to the Darkling Elder. Let's see. It's like maracas. That is very good. Okay, math time. 5 plus 5. They did it. Four. Four. That's 18. Plus three. Oh my gosh. And with that, 26 on the dice. Plus six. 32 points of damage. And the Darkling Elder takes out the gelatinous cube. Wow. Wow, not a scratch on them. The Darklings are seriously wild. The Darkling won the CR half tournament and now the Darkling Elder wins the CR two tournament. The Darklings have a dynasty here. The Darkling Elder is your CR two champion. My name is Brandon. I'll see you next time on Interplanar Fighting Championships.